Bless you, bless you, bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. My name is supposed to Peter Daniel, coming from, uh, I'm from Nigeria anyway. Uh, this is, you are watching me on the Heaven and Air Live program, the one we used to do every Monday to Friday, every Monday to Friday, uh, starting from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. By the special grace of God, I am going to tell you my experience, my contact with Jesus Christ in heaven. It's something that's happened about some years ago. I want to tell you the powerful encounters that you need to hear. Some people might be wondering because most of you didn't know how I come, how it all started, how God is begin to appear to me. But I'm going to explain to you today how it all started by the grace of God. So please and please stay and uh, listen attentively. I pray the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus everlasting father the king of king the lord of lord the ancient of days the ayam that i am the only one of israel the almighty father the great i am we appreciate you we bless your name because you are the lily of the valley you are the rock of aging you are the life living god we appreciate you because you never fail us or disappoint us in the mighty name of jesus christ everlasting father we want to thank you because you are here with us 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 we want to say thank you be thou glorified in jesus name be thou glorified in jesus name oh lord i pray for everyone looking at me today that you will release the power of god upon their life you will give them the grace the grace to understand you the more we do we open their eyes to think these things of the spirit the things of the spirit the things of the spirit you will open their eyes to know you more and more you will open their eyes and knowledge and act unto you lord to accept the message of the lord jesus christ i pray oh lord that you will destroy the work of the darkness in their life thank you father because you are faithful in jesus powerful name we have prayed amen god bless you in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth once again i said we are good I, I want to tell you my face-to-face -face encounter with jesus christ my face-to-face -face encounter with jesus christ this uh, encounter i want to tell you is a deep encounter that you need to listen and to 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 have you know it's a very important encounter that you cannot just uh, overlook in one way or the other so uh, nevertheless, that is not the first time I'll be having an encounter with Jesus Christ, but this is one of the um, the most important, you know, uh, this uh, the one that he, he took me to heaven and I see him in, a, in, in his anger. So I pray that God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, from the beginning, let me introduce myself, how it all started. By the grace of God, I came from a very humble background. My father is a man of God. Let me say my father's generation. I cannot, I cannot say generation. My father's grandfather. My father's father is a man of God. My father is a man of God. My mother is a woman of God. Our father too is a man of God. So... That's the kind of family I came from. And um, well, according to the story I was told, where my father and my mother are looking for a main child, they have to pray and tell God that God, if you can give us a son, we are going to name him Peter. And he's going to work for you. Uh, it's going to work for you for the rest of his life. He said, after the prayer, he said, my mother got pregnant. So 
And after that, she gave birth to me. Around a month, or a month to three months, to three months old, when I was still a month to three months old, uh, there are some incidents that occurs that draw the attentions of my parents. Number one incident is that uh, when I was uh, around the three months, my mother said one day she was taking my bait. So as she was taking my bait, suddenly a big bird entered, entered the house. This big bird is having human hair, head, human being head. Why the bird, the body like this is full of a uh, belt, like is a belt, B I L D, big belt. So he came to the bedroom in our house, wanted to carry me, but my mother was praying and praying and praying. So in the process, the bed disappeared. It's not a dream, physical experience. So about some weeks later, another occurrence happened. He said, that time I was also three months old. He said, because there's a big bed, my father and my mother was using it. So they lay me in their middle, according to what she told me. She said, I was sleeping on their middle, and I was sleeping at the edge, and that was sleeping at the other edge. So in the point of that, why my sisters was uh, sleeping on the floor, and the bed then was a very big bed that none of my sister could even climb the bed. That is how big it was. So in that time, around the morning time my mother said she began to look for me on the bed she did not see me that i was no more place on the bed meanwhile before my mother went to go and sleep there is a there is a meek she has prepared and kept in the fridge so that in case i wake up he will just go and carry it and uh, give it to me so it's like a feeding bottle he put it in the feeding bottle then so he put it there in the free time. So, uh, so when she wake up in the morning, she didn't find me. They begin to look for me around the house. They asked of me from my sister. My sister said that they cannot even climb it. Talking of saying that they will have to climb it to the top, climb the bed and go and carry me there. He said that it's none of them do that. So they look for me all around the whole house. They couldn't see me. So my father began to pray and God led him and told him to go to the parlor. So when they get to the parlor, there is this a long chair that is in the parlor. So my father have to open the long chairs. As he opened the long chairs, he saw that I was being laid on that, on that bed, under the chair in the parlor. Meanwhile, the room that they have is a very distant room. Like it's a different room. So and that is the hidden room they were all staying. So he was so surprised to see me under there. Like somebody has put, like the, there's a bed sheet there while I was laying on it. The, the feed that, that my mother put in the kitchen has already in my mouth. I've drunk the milk inside. So my mother, father was like, how come who put this child in the parlor under the chair? And the Lord spoke to my father and told him that, the forces of darkness came in the night to come and carry me and kill me. But the angel of God came before they come and take me and hide me from them. So that is where my father began to suspect that this child must be a very a man of God and somebody who God wanted to use for the end time. So that is what they, were, they told me when, anyway. So when I grew up, when I grew up around seven years old, I began to have a cancer. There are things that happened to me that I cannot explain because of time before getting to seven years old. But when I was seven years old, precisely, I began to have a cancer whereby angels would be coming to me physically. I am not talking about dreams. I'm not talking about visions. I'm not talking about uh, 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 this kind of thing, trans or anything. I'm talking about physically. The angels will be coming to me to meet me physically. 
the Lord Jesus Christ himself come to me physically to come and meet me when I was that uh, seven years old. And in that seven years old, I always have the visitation of our Lord Jesus Christ frequently than the other angels, the angels of God. He always come to me frequently. I'm not talking about, uh, he used to come physically during the day and during the night. See, to the extent that he will come, but only me is the one seeing him. No one can see him. Only me will see him. Sometimes he will come and sit down with me and be telling me what happened to me. In that, he tell me when I'm going to die. I mean, when I'm going to take her off to heaven. He tell me what I'm going to pass through on head. He tell me everything about the journey of my life. He tell me about the church. Then I don't understand. He talked to me. He mentioned the past life to me. He mentioned the, the redeemed to me. He mentioned CAC to me. He mentioned all these kind of churches. And they told me that they have disappointed him, that he wants me to go and correct the errors in the church. He wants me to go and expose the powers and the plans of the darkness in the church. And he also he said, he, he, he sent me to go and uh, uh, also destroy the work of the darkness in the church. So he told me many things. So most of the time that he comes, sometimes he will take my head like this and put it on his chest. I'll be hearing the way he's breathing. So I'll be hearing it. And till today, till as I'm still talking to you now, I can still hear the heart of God till today. So he, he always come to me around that seven years, eight years, nine years, we keep, keep on coming. But when I, I begin to grow, Jesus told me that I'm going to enter the world that I'm going to be a dancer, that I will enter the world, that at the age of 18 years old, he will come me back again to himself. So, and true, true, it was so. I entered the world, I began to, I began to go to parties, dance, do this, but even though I was in the world, part of me was not part of them, was not in the world. I was, you know, I have the joy going, you know, going to party because I'm a dancer, a breaking dancer, going into the world and do all these things. But the part of me, if you still ask me when I'm dancing in the party, tell me that what do you want to become? I will tell you I want to become a pastor. <laughs> and if you see the way I dress, the way I do my hair, palm my hair as a man, palm it, you know, the way I do it, everything. But faithful is God Almighty, who is honored in his mighty. So when I was exactly 18 years old, I came back to Christ again, just as he has said before and that by 18 years that I will come back to him. Uh, after that, this is my experience. After some years of my encounter with uh, coming back to Christ, I have an encounter about some years back. And that encounter was a serious encounter, very serious encounter. That day I was in my one of my friend's house, and uh, I was one of my friend's house. And uh, uh, I went to go and greet them. So they begin to, they were not playing songs. These songs are Christian songs. She were playing, playing it. So I too was singing with them. Precisely is one of the songs of Top, uh, no, sorry, Bisa Alawiye. They say Nigeria artist they call Bishop Alawiye, so he was told that he was singing about revelations, revelation in the Bible. So that was what he was singing. So he began to on he began to worship God in that song. So I too was singing it. So as I was singing the song, I enter into the spirit and begin to speak in tongues. So as I was speaking in tongues, suddenly there was a snatch. There was a snatch that took me off. Just a snatch. I just said, boom. That's only thing. I just said, boom. So my spirit came out of my body. I was here, still sitting there. But nobody understands what is happening to me. So my spirit took off to heaven. So as it took me off to heaven, I was going up in a very high speed. As I was going in a very, very high speed, um, it got to a level, I landed, I just saw myself in the presence of God. I could not exactly, physically, I've seen Jesus Christ very well. So 
it's my, many times that I cannot say that I'm, I've seen it from this time. You know, when they said many times that you cannot count the times you have seen him many times. He has come to, he has, he has been coming to me many times physically. See him, everything about him. So, but that day, the kind of glory I saw is a different one entirely. It's more deep. Like whenever he comes, he comes like man, you don't understand. But now he was sitting on the throne. The glory that covered him was a very high one. I saw myself leaning down before Jesus Christ. But as I was leaning down, one of the things I noticed about it is that I saw that I was, my tongues begin to say some language that is different from the tongues I was saying in the in the physical realm. So these tongues that was coming out is like heavenly language. But this heavenly language, I could not really understand the meaning of this heavenly language that I was saying in that uh, in that revelations. So I was just saying it, saying it, you know. It's like I was, I was, I was like, man, it's as if you are worshiping some, somebody, someone's worshiping God, but you could not understand. But it's a total language, like different, it's like the language of heaven, completely the language of heaven. It's different when entirely. So I leaned down, I was look, I was worshiping him. My mouth could not stop worshiping. He just keep worshiping. He could not stop, he could not, you know, I could not control the tongues any longer. So as I was, I was worshiping God, I was on my knee. So suddenly I saw him sitting on the, on the throne, very big. So very big, I was just standing like a, like a, like, like a, like a hand or let me say like a fly. I saw him sitting on the throne. So I was worshiping him, worshiping him, worshiping him. So I begin to say, okay, let me look at this, uh, this man sitting on the, on the throne. So I begin to trace him from the leg. So as I was tracing him from the leg, I was tracing him from the leg. When I get to the, uh, the, the, the ankles here, I trace him. I said, let me look at him from there. So I was putting my eyes up little by little. So when I get to the chest, I said, let me look at the eyes. So as I say, I should look at the eyes like this, the light that was shining from his eyes was so glorious that as I look at him, I shouted. That light just magnetized my eyes, like magnetized my whole body, my whole, the whole me, and draw me down. I was leaning down before. He drew me down flat before him. I begin to, the light begin to roll me himself. Begin to roll me in itself. He begin to roll me, roll me, roll me, roll me, roll me on the floor. But the tongues were still talking, like I was still worshiping him with the tongues of heaven. So he began to roll me, roll me on the floor, roll me, roll me right and left, roll me. I was there for like, and I cannot say this time. It's every time, so you cannot see, I specify that this is time to this time. But I keep on worshiping him for long. So this is one of the reasons that if anybody tell me that you have seen Jesus Christ, and God took you to heaven, and uh, when you get to his throne, you were standing, he was talking to you, and we know it's not Jesus Christ you saw. Because the glory in the life of Jesus, the, in his face, you cannot be aided with physical. Even though he has been coming to me since when I was small, yet when I get to the kingdom and I want to see him in his own real glory, I cannot behold the glory because the glory was so great. If you close your eyes and say you want to look at it, the glory will penetrate into your eyes and to your body. The glory that can destroy and vanish a man, like it's too powerful. You know now, if there is now, you know when they own a torch, let me say they own a torch now. If you put your hand on a torch like this, you know the torch will not be able to go out, you know? But you, you feel that your hand is become, you can see that your hand is red. Are you there? You see that your hand is red by putting your hand on the torch. You see that your hand is red. You'll be seeing it, but the torch will not go out, but your hand will be red. Now, the glory of God, if glory of God shine upon you, it will penetrate through you out. Nothing can stop it. Look at me now. It will penetrate through you out. The glory will come out of your back. So it's nothing that is going to be like this and your hand will be red. It's, not, it's going to come out. Nothing can stop it. Not, that's why I said nothing is in that. If you hide on that, the, you, 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 you have to dig the whole ground. You dig it and enter the deep, deep. God, the glory of God will penetrate that ground and see you and fetch you out there. That's how glorious 
The glory of God is so powerful. I'm just trying to explain to you, you know, explain to you how it is. The glory can vanish the whole world. If the, if, if, if he decided to say, okay, I want to destroy the world, this glory alone is enough. It's enough. So that is why whenever you see people who are going to hell, when Jesus Christ, whenever Jesus Christ, I want to visit hell himself. How, if you know how dark and deep dark air fire is, no black, no, no black, no black thing that human being has created has been so black like hell fire. I repeat, there's no black color so deep in color like hell fire. It's, hell fire is so chronically deep, like I, it's, 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 it's not, it's not, I cannot compare it in the human being tongues. It's so chronically deep. And whenever Jesus Christ go there, his glory will stand as old as a light to the whole hell. So if you know what I'm trying to say there, the glory in the body of Jesus Christ is more shining than sun. And you know nobody can hear sun. So let me just go back to what I am saying. So in the part when I saw him, my eyes were just, <laughs> he began to draw me, draw me, draw me, draw me, like roll me on the floor. As a point, that place just wiped off, like as if it's wiped off. I just saw myself in the sky. I, I saw myself leaning down in the sky. And I saw Jesus Christ again appear to me in the throne again. But this time around, the glory that was upon him that time is as reduced. Now he wants to talk to me. So as reduced. So he was standing, say I was sitting on the throne while I was leaning down. So as he was sitting on the throne, I also, that kind of same mentality I have by saying that, uh, by saying that uh, I want to look at him from the from the feet, it's the same mentality that came out to my, my heart too. That let me look at him from the from the feet again. I begin to look at him from the feet. I begin to look at him from the feet. So as I was looking at him as from the feet, the same thing happens. But this one is another thing that happened. When I get to the to the ankle here. I said, let me look at him and forward it to the chest. When I get to the chest, one of the things I noticed is that I saw Jesus breathing heavily. Like somebody who is, <laughs> like somebody who is extremely, it's not about anger, you know, anger breath. He was breathing, like breathing very angrily. He was breathing. He was breathing like somebody, so I was afraid. Immediately, I saw it, I was afraid immediately. That what can this be? So it was breathing heavily, breathing every day, breathing heavily. So I now decided that, let me look at his face. Now what is happening? By the time I put up my head to look at his face, what I saw in his face is a different entirely. I saw the eyes of Jesus Christ red. It is not just red. It is red like a blood, like blood. And now, at the same time, that eyes was fire. It's like when they mix blood with fire together. It was so chronically red with fire in that eyes. When I saw it, fear gripped my heart. I was shaking with all my heart, all my body. I was shaking, like I was so, I was so trembling that all everything about me that is called human being went off and went off completely. Completely went off. I was shaking. I was shaking. I was shaking like this. I said, "Jesus, Jesus." So I shouted as I saw it. I shouted at on. I, I shouted and said, "I said, Lord." I, have I seen against you? As I say it, nothing happened. I said it's the second time. I said, Lord, is it my ministry that sin against you? 
it did not, it, nothing happened. He didn't say anything. And he thought to myself, Lord, Jesus, is it the church that sinned against you? Then he spoke. He said, I am angry. I am angry. As he said, I am angry. Everything in heaven, in fact, turned into darkness. That darkness was with thunder. The thunder was so strong that earthquake happened where I was. Everywhere was shaking. The, it was very strictly angrily saying that. Angry with the heart. As he said, the echo entered into the personality of me. He said, I am angry. I am angry. I am angry. As he said it, all my plans just let me die. Where I was leaning down, I was looking for death. Where I was leaning down, I was looking for the ground to open so that I can, it can, it can cover me from his anger. I was seriously down. I was seriously off. I have died inside. Like, I just, I was looking for death. Just at that word. How scary it was. I am angry. I am angry. In other words, I am angry with the church. He said, I am angry with the church. I am angry with the servant I sent to the world. He said, the toy that I redeem with my blood. He said, see what they are doing in my church. As he said that, I was just shaking. All my body was off. All my body, everything about me is off. So I was just listening. I cannot do anything. I cannot move. Just everything is scattered at their voice of saying, I am angry. He says, see what they are doing in the church. See! He said, look at the holiness pastors. See people who call themselves holiness pastors. See what they are doing in the secret. They thought I did not see them. They thought I did not see them. I am hungry. As he was saying it, they thought that keep everything was just. He said, they thought I did not see. See what they are doing secretly. So God began to tell me some things which I'm about to tell you. And he told me that as you want the church, that anyone who do all these things are going to hell. One of the things he mentioned was watching football. Watching football. He mentioned it very well. So if you are a Christian, you are watching football, or you are a fan of footballer, or you, 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 you used to play games, or you used to watch worldly films, worldly music, uh, all these things, the Lord says, I should tell you that you are going to hell. That his anger is on your head. Then he mentioned playing of Loto, Baba, Gebu, Nanga Bed, all those beds of a team. He said, I should tell you that anyone doing all these things is going to hell. He was angrily speaking. Angrily speaking. Then one of the things is also mentioned is coming late to the torch. Coming late to the torch. If the same time is nine o'clock, or they say it is seven o'clock, they are starting, and you come by after, after seven, a minute after seven, you are going to hell. I know some people are there in the, uh, in the social media saying, ah, everything is air fire. Everything is air fire. Yes, they can say it, but this is what God told me to tell you. When they say it's seven o'clock and you come a minute past seven, air fire straight. 
He talked about late coming in the church. He said, these things is making him angry. The truth of the fact is that if they say they want to give you money and they say you must arrive by five, and you know that they say, I will give him 10 people that first arrive by five. <laughs> I trust you. By 3.30 in the midnight, you will have be there waiting for them. No, so some people will even sleep there and put might and say, let me sleep so that because we don't know who can, who can come early. So they will sleep there. But when you come to the service of God Almighty, you will be wasting times. You'll be wasting time. You will not want to go through up. The Lord said, I should tell you that he is angry. So one of the things is also mentioned to me is not faithful in tight and offering. Not faithful in tight and offering. Some people say that tight is not going to take you to hell. I'm telling you the truth. The Bible said this you ought to do and not to, to leave the rest undone. The Bible says in Jesus chapter 2, verse 7, it said, if you are just in all, all the law, but in one you make a mistake, he said you are guilty of all. If you are not faithful in what belongs to God, you are going to hell. Not only that, the cost that is attached to those who are paying tight, well, those who are not paying tight, it will be following the person. Not only that, the God himself almighty will be a, he will not provide for such a person. And different things will be happening to the person. Talking about tight and offering, you didn't know the kind of cost that follow it. They will say our pastors are emphasizing on tithe because they want, uh, they want people to give them tithe and offering. It's a lie. The reason why God wanted it is not maybe it's God that is eating it, but he just wants to use it as a test for everyone. When he has given you a lot of things, it's now requiring you to give him just one thing. One. Just one. He wants to know how best you he has been in your heart. How number one you have taken him in your heart. So if he's not asking you now that pay your tax and offering and you are not doing it, the amenity will be attached to you. And if you are also paying it to a wrong pastor, now you are paying it now, but you are paying it to a wrong pastor, the pastor is a fake pastor. It will not be acceptable. And to heaven, it will be counted as you are seeing debtor. Not only that, if you are now paying the tithe to a wrong source, if your thought is still doing worldliness, maybe they are wearing all those things and you are paying your tithe into it. Any thought that is a worldly church is not a church of Christ. Any thought that they are wearing the things of the world. You see, there are two different things in the world. It's either you follow Jesus or you follow the devil. It's either you follow Christ or you follow the devil. Our God is the only God. He cannot compromise his standard because of any church. So any church that doesn't follow the holiness of God is the church of the devil. And that church, God is not there. And God is not there. If you were to go and pay your tithe there, it will be recorded in the books of the devil that you pay your tithe in the devil's kingdom. And that will attract the cause of God in the more in your life. Because you are not paying it to the right source, to the right place. In the book of heaven, it will be written as you have no pay at all. Because you are, it does not go to God. Number four, if you are not paying the tithe to the thought that didn't lay on you, it will not be acceptable. 
Where you must pay your tithe is, for example, now, if a particular pastor is the one you know you are hearing his message and his message is changing your life, is the one you should pay your tithe to. Listen to me. If you are hearing a man of God or is a church you are going to and that church is laboring much on you, probably the message you are receiving from there or the prayer you are receiving from there is the one that's changing your life. It's changing your car. It's changing your life. Where they are, where they are, they are, they are, they are laboring on you. That is where God expects you to pay your tithe. So if you now want to go and pay your tithe somewhere else, it will not be accepted. You can be going to a church and that church is not laboring on you. That's no place. Where your life is big getting the act, is getting your attention to heaven. That is where you pay your tithe. That's what many people did not know about tithe and offering. Are you listening to me now? Now, another thing about, uh, about uh, what God told me is dying of year. Die of year. Your ear is white. You not turn into black. You say because you are you are you are you are you are not old enough, or and you are just having white hair in your ears. So you now want to go and put white uh, this thing there. What are they calling it? Uh, uh, dye there, yeah. so that it can become black. So that people will not be saying that you are old. You are going to hell. Don't you understand what Matthew says? He said, can any man make him his ear white or black? Can anyone make it? And the answer was no. And you now go and make yourself, showing that you are God of yourself. You are going to hell for that. Anyone that died in us or I here is going to hell. One of the things that God also spoke asked is the issue of using laptop to preach. Listen to me. Taking laptop to preach. I'm not saying that, for example, now, you are using it to program something or to see something. That's not what I'm saying. But taking laptop, instead of taking Bible to the altar, to the pulpit, that's what I'm saying, to the pulpit of God, you not take the laptop there, Place it on the pulpit, or taking your uh, your part, or taking your phone instead of taking Bible there to the altar to go and preach the word of God. The last son told me that tell you that you are if you come to if you die now you are heading to hellfire. What substitute Bible from you? Bible is a holy script scroll. That God has been has given to us. Nothing should substitute it from you. Bible is a is Bible. For example, now probably you want to shoot something on the on the on, on the projector. Now you now take your laptop and your Bible. Your Bible, you preach from your Bible, but you are not projecting something. That was not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you taking your laptop to the altar as form of Bible, reading your Bible from the laptop, you are going to hell. You are going to hell for that. That's what the Lord said that I should tell you about that. Then another thing that God spoke to me is any Christian that is possessed with demons, I don't make ever to. Any Christian possessed with demon. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. He said, For no unclean things, no unclean things, no unclean sin will by any means enter the kingdom of God. No unclean things, unclean things will by any means enter the kingdom of God. Unclean things. Unclean things. Remember, I mentioned unclean things. We by any means enter the kingdom of God. 
So if a Christian is possessed with a demon and you die, you are going to hell. The reason is because God cannot sit at the top of, of your heart and the demon also sit on your heart. It's not possible. You cannot have the demon of anger in you or the demon of pride in you or the demon of lust in you and God sits sitting there. It's not, he said, no unclean things. That body is the fire. Is the fire. If you are still having dream that you have you are having sex in the dream and you did not go and do deliverance, it can lead you to hellfire. If you have to this your wife, to this your husband, and you are still having sex in the dream, it can lead you to hell because nobody possessed with a demon will make ever. So God said, as you warn the people of God about this, you must make sure that you are set free and delivered from any kind and forms of demons ruling in your life for you to be qualified to enter heaven. <laughs> One of the things that now mentioned to me is going to a worldly church. If you are a Christian and on Sunday or any service, they invited you or they called you and you go to a holy church, you're going to attend there. You are not qualified for heaven. It's just as the same thing, you going to an idolatry church to go and worship. To go to an idol house to go and worship the idol. Only next Christian should not have anything to do it with any worldly touch. Only next Christian should not have anything to do with worldly touch. Worldly touch is worldly touch. What makes what is called worldly touch? Worldly touch is a touch where they believe in righteousness, but did not believe in holiness within and without. You know that righteousness is a way of man. They believe that you must be good to people, you must help them, you must do this, you must be clean, you must not lie. That is all righteousness. Holiness is an act of purity within and without. Your dressing is holy, you are not opening and exposing your body, you cover your parts, you cover your, 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 your body. You did not use pow uh, uh, powder. You did not use the rings. You did not use chains. You did not use wigs. You did not use attachments. You did not use anything in the world that pertains to the world. These are holiness people. Holiness people must be sure that they are living in holiness within and without. Any thoughts that doesn't believe in such things are called worldly touch. If you are using small, small ring, you are worldly touch. All these things are... So Christians, holiness people, must not partake in going to that source or else they will be removed from the book of life. Except if God is sending you to go and preach there. Maybe God send it to that person or to that church to go and proclaim God's message there. Warn them against the sin they are committing. Except that. Time. But going there to go and worship, and you must not partake. Another thing God mentioned to me, he said, as you want those who he has called, and they are refusing God's calling. Listen to me now. God called you and you are receiving, refusing God calling. You are postponing it. The Lord said, I should tell you that his anger is heavily on you. On you. Because many so that are supposed to be one to the kingdom has lost their way, their path to hell. Because you refused to do his way. So the Lord said, I should warn you, tell me about it. 
So if you know that God called you, God called you, go and answer the call of God. Or hence, you find your part in hell if you die. The Lord said, as you also warn pastors, he said, any pastor that is not preaching holiness, righteousness, all what they are preaching is about spiritual growth, uh, financial ability, all these kind of things. He said, the Lord said, the Lord said, I should tell them that they are on their path to hell. That there should no bother of thinking of heaven. That they are part to hell. Any pastor that is not preaching holiness, the Bible said, he said, with that holiness, no one will see the Lord. Follow man. Follow all men with holiness and peace. No, without this, no one will see that. So if you do follow men if with peace or with holiness, you cannot make it to heaven. You cannot see God. So get, the Lord said, I should tell this to the ministers of God. Then the Lord said, I should warn ministers, whether you are, a, uh, you are a song ministers, you are a preacher, you are an evangelist, you are a prophet, whatsoever you are. If they invite you, to a program. If they invite you to a program, if they invite you to a program, and by when they invite you, you begin to touch them with money. And you tell them that before you can sing that they have to pay you 200000 500,000, 1 million, 2 million. You are charging the church. The Lord said that he has rejected you. One. Two, you are going to hell. The Lord said if you did not repent and you die like that, God's punishment will be heavy upon you. God did not give you the gift for purchase to be to be using it for merchandise, for business. Nevertheless, as a minister, if you invite any minister of God, you are expected by God to honor them. There's no wrong in you giving them on 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 Do them very well. Do say because they didn't charge you, and you are now doing them anyhow. God will also judge you. When they come from the part to come and ministers, we are all brethren. Saying that, thank you, sir, is a good thing. Paul opposed to recognize or commend the church to do that. And it's very important. But any ministers invited and you are not charging the church about this particular money that you cannot minister except they give you this, the, you are on your way to hell. These are one of the things that God also spoke to me about the pastors. Another thing is that the Lord said, as you tell all the people who is going to Catholic Church, that they are on their way to hell fire. If you are going to Catholic Church, know that you are going to hell. The Lord said you should come out from that Catholic Church. Come out from there. Come out from there completely. I pray you will not go to hell in Jesus' name. One of the things that God also mentioned to me is washing pornography as a Christian, adultery, fornications, masturbating, fighting. These things lost, it will totally take you and take you to hell. God also asked me to warn the women. Listen to me very well. This one, when he mentioned women, when he was speaking to me and he mentioned women, his anger was doubled. His anger was so doubled that he was seriously angry. He said, tell the women that I am angry with them. Not all of them, please. He said, because they 
I've made my servant fails. He said, it's from there that many ministers he sent to the world fails. That they have been an instrument of the devil. Any women wearing mini skirt to the torch, you will see the anger of God. Not only that you will be going to hell, but the anger of God will be attached. Any women wearing weapon, attachment, wearing a uh, powder, painting mouth, painting leaf, something, putting uh, leaf, leaves, uh, uh, wet leaves, put all this kind of things, wearing eye heel, eye heel, wearing Meaning uh, something, transparent clothes, uh, bomb bomb hog. When you wear skirt that is too tight to your uh, bottom, all this kind of thing. The Lord said, "I should tell that is angry at you, and you are on your way to hell. You have to remove them and burn them now before you die." And lastly, the Lord shout to my ear. He said, "Tell my church that ninety nine point nine percent holiness I hate." I want all the Christians to live all hundred percent holiness. Check your life. Whether your life is according to God, whether your life is pleasing to God, check your life, check your motive, check your behaviors. Make sure that they are all ple- they are all in holiness and righteousness. The Bible says, don't forget, if you are just in all the law, but in one, you miss it. Probably in tithing or in offering or in this and this. Some people will go to church and go and give God 200 and they have a lot of money. All these kind of things is very dangerous also. This little, little thing you didn't count as something can take you to hell. Us are telling you to sit here and you are saying, no, you want to sit there, can take you to hell. Be careful. Be careful. I pray you will not go to hell in Jesus' name. God bless you. God be with you. This is a message, my face-to-face encounter I have with Jesus Christ in heaven about some years ago. And the Lord said, I should keep sharing this all over the world. As you are looking at this video, share it to everyone. Don't go without subscribing. Don't forget, subscribe to this channel so that you can hear more of what God is saying in this time to all the side of God. You can hear more of God's voice. Subscribe and press uh, uh, the notification button so that you also can be alert whenever I post a video. God bless you. God be with you. If you want to join our program on Zoom, deliverance program, or uh, uh, our teachings like this, you can WhatsApp me. My WhatsApp number will be written there. This is written there already. Please uh, try and message me. I pray the Lord God will save you and be with you to the end in Jesus' name. We will make it to heaven together in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. God be with you and God bless you. Thank you. Bye.